What's happening, people? Welcome back to another episode of the Mini Adult Troubles. In today's episode, I have with me Avanti Nagaral, a content creator, a musician, a storyteller, an entrepreneur, and above all of it, someone who is truly impacting people's life by ch- challenging the stereotypes. Welcome to the show, Avanti. Thank you for that very kind introduction, and thank you for having me. I'm so right. excited. So you know, uh, this is my sixtieth episode almost in the last two years, and oh uh, congrats! Yeah. and you have been one of the top 5 toughest people to bring on the podcast <laughs> i'm so sorry about that <laughs> no it's it's not a problem just privilege that um, finally you're here so really appreciate giving you you know you giving the your time you no of course i apologize scheduling is crazy no, 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 no. i know your I, schedule is also <laughs> yeah i understand i i, I think i have rescheduled with prinel at least 3 times uh, sometimes my schedule did not work out sometimes yours So it's all fun. Uh, anyway, how's it? We're finally here. Yeah, yeah. How's it going? Uh, I, I've seen that you have traveling a lot in the last two weeks. Uh, right yes. now you're in LA, right? I'm in LA right now. Yes, that's correct. So how, how's it going? It's going well. I mean, um, obviously, like all of us, we've been in in our homes or at least in yeah. mostly stable places this past two years, hmm. and it feels it feels nice to be back in the US because I've. was here for college and then of course I spent my early childhood here. I I mean I always spend time here so mm-hmm. last year was the first time that I I didn't spend at least a couple months here so it felt thoda sa ajeeb you know because you feel uh, like that if you if you've grown up going to I don't know your parents hometown or whatever it might be for me that's what the US has always been like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it felt weird like a part of me wasn't there but um I'm here now for for some work uh and it's It's cool. It's 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 exciting, and I'm grateful that we can travel in you know a safe yeah. way. And I've done. My nose is probably blocked from the number of COVID tests I've done in the last two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, this this reminds me that uh, so I was in the US just ten days before the COVID breakout happened in the US. Oh my gosh! So yes. February twenty twenty twenty, I had my flight back from the US to India, and I remember. Amazing. the airport in india was crazy with you know uh, testing and all that just after 10 days the lockdown happened in india yes <laughs> and i was like wish this would have happened before so that i would be stuck in the us <laughs> honestly though i don't know if you feel this way but a lot of my friends who were stuck in the us yeah. they felt very lonely right because in in a lot of ways especially if you don't have family around but even mm. then culturally sometimes It's such an independent culture that I you feel it. lonely during a time, right? So I feel mm-hmm. really grateful that I was in India during the pandemic. Mm. Yeah, so actually, I mean, I the pandemic my, still exists, but I have you know my brothers uh, in the US, so it was fun and chill okay. for me. Yeah, but right. So uh, again, congrats for your uh, recent release, Jealous. Thank you. Uh, before before going deep into that song, I just wanted to know when did you you know uh, discover your passion. uh for singing and songwriting I've been singing for as long as I can remember you know I um, mm-hmm. my dad plays the tabla he's an entrepreneur in the tech field by profession but mm. used to play while I was growing up on the side and so I grew up around that a lot I grew up singing bhajans I learned Indian classical music so mm-hmm. there was always you know what kehte na ghar pe mahol hota hai so there was mm-hmm. always that environment of music but specifically Yeah. more you know older indian styles of music and that appreciation um but i i just loved it i you know i learned the piano for a number of years and i did all types of musical things in school right but i was also very passionate uh, about a lot of academic passions so for me i never thought that it would be something i would do professionally and mm-hmm. um, i always just knew that i wanted music to be a big part of my life yeah but i took a gap year between high school and college i had gotten in and i decided to you know essentially go the following year because i had the opportunity to play the lead role in this theater show that was happening all across india yeah and i was like okay hey, probably not going to get this opportunity again where i'm responsibility free you know where mm-hmm. it didn't matter how much money i was making at that point so um i did that and during that time i started writing and i realized that i you know i had a lot to say and always have but but that art could mm. be a beautiful medium i was just going to say that. that yeah um because for the longest time i was really interested when i was little i thought i wanted to be a doctor surrounded mm. by doctors all my grandparents were doctors then when i was a teenager i thought that i wanted to do something in the global health space 
um, mostly because I saw, you know, kind of the need to talk about issues on a larger scale Got or it. kind of impact them. Yeah, so yeah. actually, as a teenager, I did a lot of work in the space of CPR and first aid and organ donation and mental health and things that I felt like you could still impact as a young person and you didn't need, you know, a medical degree for. Mm -hmm. And I guess my nuance at the time was that I was always interested in the intersection of social impact and health and the arts because I realized the power that art can hold, right? I had a lot of personal health experiences myself. Um, yeah. And one in particular, when I was about 16, I almost lost my eyesight. And the thing that helped me through that was music. And, you know, I saw its healing power for myself and, of course, recognized it at a larger scale. Mm -hmm. But then I also started seeing music as, as not just a tool, but also a vehicle, if that makes sense. Um, where, you know, you, you are able to share messages that impact the world. So for the longest time, I thought that I would do something at the intersection, but I thought that I would mm -hmm. be on the other side of it where yeah. I would probably mobilize, you know, artists or creatives or media mm -hmm. to talk about certain things. If you asked me at 18, would I be a full-time musician and YouTuber? I would say, tu <laughs> So uh... <laughs> I did not see that coming. <laughs> <laughs> so now, uh, <laughs> but that is what we're doing and we're doing i'm really grateful because i still feel i'm doing what is true and honest to myself and it just happens to be in the other way right where, yeah. where i also the kind of the body for that vehicle and that engine if that makes sense yeah i think i think you're supremely creative plus you have high empathy uh basically you you know you feel other people you have empathy you have gone through a lot of experience yourself so you basically mix both of them and uh, reflect that through your songs. The Suntolo uh, and the Jealous and all the other songs, they have some deeper meaning uh, attached to you also and also something you know you would want to set across through your songs. So yeah, that, that shows. Right. So more than others, parents, peers, how did you convince yourself that you, know, uh, <laughs> you want to do this? Especially after Howard, I, I can imagine the pressure uh, yeah. you know, somebody's going to another Ivy League or they're doing startups, mm -hmm. top level jobs. How did you convince mm -hmm. yourself? Because you have to sacrifice. Think, no, thank you for that question. Most people ask me, what, how did I convince my parents, which I can mm -hmm. also talk about, but mm -hmm. I think you're right that the self sometimes is more important. Um, I just knew that. So, you know, when I was on my gap year, I, I was performing a lot and I just fell in love with the stage in a way that I knew that that's where I wanted to be. I yeah. didn't know in what capacity, right? Um, I loved performing. I loved public speaking. I loved all of these aspects. And there was a part of me that always, you know, because I was interested in this intersection, I'm like, there's a, there's this concept or idea of a voice that you can have in multiple forms. You can have your mm -hmm. literal voice, your metaphorical voice, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I just knew that I would regret it for the rest of my life if I didn't try after okay. college, right? And especially with the privilege of going to a place like Harvard, mm. if I couldn't take that risk, who can, you know, um, in the sense. That so true. It's, yeah. If nothing else, although I don't view it this way, I view it as, you know, one of the most beautiful experiences, but if nothing else. I have a degree. I have a safety net, right? Mm. I can always go back to doing something more quote unquote traditional. Um, but if I don't give myself the space and time to explore, doing this then then yeah. i regret it and honestly, by the time i graduated i was a little bit disappointed in some of my classmates um okay because many of them come into institutions like harvard right saying they want to change the world they want to impact climate change they care about blah 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 and 60 percent of my class went into consulting and finance not that there's anything wrong with those fields i think they're incredibly important fields but at least 20 percent of the people who went there if they tried taking a risk and doing something else you know it, mm. it might have made a world of difference because several of them are going to end up being in that field and maybe getting bored switching and not really knowing what they want to do but they're doing that because a they get a good package right of That's course. It, um, yeah. and you know you don't want to turn down the the package you get after whatever or because you've gone to a place like harvard people always ask oh so what are you doing right now like the, for the literally for the first year right when i was in college i was still performing and i was doing this professionally 
but the cover was still oh she's in college right once you graduate everyone's like oh to kya kar rahi hai and then you know it's like, yeah i get it i just graduated you're doing yeah music right <laughs> and it's like what what is the need um and i don't really have to prove anything to anybody else um i think you're right in the sense that you have to be extremely comfortable with it and you have to know that it's exactly. the choice you're making and yeah. then the rest of it, you can always figure out labels that will make the world happy you know or mm. that will fend people off when they are doing whatever they're doing or asking whatever they're asking but i think for me it was really important that mm. i i knew i would regret it for the rest of my life if i didn't do it and and i always wanted to you know as you mentioned one of the things you mentioned is a startup right because this idea of doing a startup after whatever is sexy as an artist you are running a startup the difference is the startup is yourself and you are also the brand and the product and an extension of that you Ooh. know um, yeah the work it takes is equivalent if not more it's just people don't necessarily see it that it's way it's not corporate it's creative so it's yeah. not really associated yeah exactly but but the skills you learn i mean if you do something like this and then if you decide to go back into that world those skills are still transferable as well mm, so sure exactly it's, it's amazing yeah i was i was speaking to one of my friends uh today only he he's a fund he runs a funded company and he also has a youtube channel with over 150k subscribers he was telling me that before running this startup i was running my youtube that was also startup because you know i yeah. had to listen to my customers basically which is audience and then i have to change yeah. my product which is my video so uh, that that makes a lot of sense and and i asked you this question because wo log kya kahenge factor is more uh, mm-hmm. you know wo dimag mein zyada aata hai yaar log kya kahenge job hi le lete hain bahar mein jaye sab test pass baad mein dekh lenge so uh-huh. that really But influences agar aap zindagi log kya kahenge se jeete ho then you will never listen to yourself and your inner voice right and then you'll be living a life for others as opposed to this one life that you have for yourself mm-hmm. what i what i mean by that is i i truly believe to live a life with the intention of impacting others right um that's always at least that's what gives me purpose and that's what keeps me doing this and grounded in it but if you live it for what others say they might change their mind tomorrow you know people won't be around and and as much as i think it's important that you know if you're close with your family and hamare culture mein it's this idea that we we want our parents approval or we want their support right um that's all important and there's ways to go about it but they're not living your life you are and if you aren't happy yeah. with the life that you're living what's the point yeah agreed agreed i think uh, even after so uh, i graduated last year only august 2020 and post that i was freelancing mm-hmm. yeah thank you <laughs> i was freelancing and i was figuring out what to do uh every every relative and everyone started asking ayush kya kar raha hai to my mom you know uh, and she she honestly does not know even what i'm doing right now right i'm running an agency working with brands creators unko kuch nahi pata she's like ki kuch kar raha hai freelance apna so being comfortable with this that not yeah. caring about you know ki bolna nahi as you said label and all that that's very important man wo label label probably it will come after one year or two years you know when i launch all of this and stuff like that tab tak ke jo 2 saal ka wait hota hai you know struggling and yeah. figuring it out that is what you have to take individually uske liye i think that that's where everybody probably you know take the other way around uh, of of jobs and whatever you, yeah correct so being being a creator uh, you're a creator i am sort of a creator uh, but be yeah coming back being a creator being a girl all of this comes with a lot of stereotypes right and it it's also yeah. adds on to the pressure uh because it's different it's not the usual way with respect mm-hmm. to both these points creator being a creator and the goal uh you have you know you have challenged the norms you particularly have challenged the norms through your songs through your content uh through your youtube videos which i have not seen other creators doing uh you have used your distribution your you know audience ko you have tried to uh be vocal uh, if i can say that uh you take it head on basically what was what goes behind your mind because it takes a lot of you know it takes a lot of courage when i see your videos your videos are like damn that's that takes a lot of courage to come out like that and you know uh, say stuff like that so number one how do you do that a uh, lot of respect yeah. for that specifically and second uh, what is the impact that you have seen you know in terms of your audience man um i guess i'm hyper aware that a lot of opportunities that i've received in life have come from a sense of privilege right um mm. part of there's no difference between 
me and somebody else who is extremely hardworking as well, mm -hmm. who is afforded the opportunity to go to a place like Harvard, right? Or to get certain opportunities. Yeah. The difference is I had exposure to that early on. I had access to that information. I had those opportunities, right? And so recognizing that a lot of it comes from a space off that access, for me, it's, I almost see it as, as a sense of a responsibility to, mm. to make sure that that, that inequity is, is bridged, right? And that access to opportunity, access to, to tools that, that help you uplift your mindset, you know? Um, and so for me, that's why, you know, a lot of parts of my content are in the education space as well, because it's like, hey, these are things that I had access to and I know, but you can also. And here's ways we can simply break them down so that you know what this world is like, you know. Um, mm. When it comes to other things, right, I, I come, I grew up in a household where, of course, it's taken what people say on the internet with how I have conversations with my family is after a few years of work of making that, you know, a comfort zone to talk about these things. But to me, that was extremely uh -huh. important because I'm an older sister. I have okay. a younger brother. And, um, you know, I think for me, as as someone who sees like I have an active role in his life and upbringing in some sense, even though he's just four years younger than me, it was just important to talk about things, right? Because I realized that if, if we didn't have a conversation about, say, sex, we were not having a conversation about consent and good touch mm. and bad touch and, you know, vulnerability and all of that. Yeah. We didn't talk about mental health, especially as a guy. You go through life thinking, oh, boys can't cry, you know, all of these stereotypes and mm. uh, exactly and so literally it was really important that i started having those conversations at home partially because i have a younger sibling right and so as a result you know i i realized that i was able to bring members of my household to a place where we're comfortable talking about some of these things mm -hmm. and i realized that that's not the norm right um and so i figured that if if i can start to talk about these things and share them in a way that feels comfortable and accessible to people. If mm. nothing else, maybe they'll see it's possible or maybe it'll spark a conversation for them with somebody else, right? Yeah. So for me, it was really important because when I think about what ended up happening is with when I started talking about general education stuff, a lot of the audience started becoming younger and younger. And to mm. me, it was it was like I was talking to all my younger siblings or younger versions of myself, right? And what did I want to know at that point? I wanted to understand what my opportunities were in life, career-wise, but I also wanted mm. to understand, like, how the heck do relationships work? You know, what is this thing? Why are people taboo, um, you know, not hush-hush talking about sex? I'm not feeling okay. Like, what? So all the things that I kind of cared about, that I know that people care about. And as you were saying to your friend earlier, you have to talk to your audience. You have to know what your customer is like. You have to, yeah. you know, find tune and... And I realized there was a huge need mm. because nobody was talking about it in the same way. And so I started doing that. And then I started involving my family, right? I started involving my grandmother, um, my parents and some things. And, yeah. and you know, I, I just think that it is hard. And it is, you know, you mentioned being being a woman on the internet as well. That does add an added factor where, as it is, it's hard to be a woman on the internet. And then when you start talking about <laughs> exactly. things like this, you get very interesting yeah. comments and uh, yeah. messages. But... You know, you have to take it in your stride. And there was, a point, the game. if I'm being honest with you, where my parents were a little uncomfortable with it. Um, and, you know, they, they, and I get it, right? Because it's, you putting a lot of stuff out there and not just talking about things, but also I was giving personal context to it, right? I wasn't just talking about it from an objective way because mm -hmm. part of being a creator and if you want to engage with it, you don't have to, but you can is you can show authentic parts of your own self and life, right? Yeah, yeah. So if I talk about these things, I would talk about my own experiences with them as well. And that made them really uncomfortable. And I had to, it had to come to a point where I told them, hey, I'm sorry that this makes you uncomfortable, but I'm comfortable with making you uncomfortable because I see that this has a larger impact or meaning or can, right? Yeah. Um, and so in any case, I'm really grateful that there are a lot of people for whom it is a safe space, right? And and for whom um, they feel like they can learn or grow or or feel comfortable sharing or building community, right? Because to yeah. me, it wasn't just that ki mein kuch bata rahi and I am the you know mm. the person you have to listen to. It's, it was rather like how do you spark that conversation for people at home or with each other? Yeah. Which is why we have we have a Discord server, and I love 
Yeah, I've seen that. It sometimes because uh, people will have these conversations and it has nothing to do with me in the sense they're gathering there because they all mm. know who I am or whatever the situation is, right? Mm. But the, they've created a space with each other that allows them to, to engage in those conversations. Yeah, I got it. Right, so talking to you reminds me of talking to my sister because whatever mm. you, the reference that you told me, right, uh, your brother's reference, that is exactly what I got. So my sister coincidentally also works in public health. She she oh, lives yes, in right? yeah she lives in Germany and uh, every whatever uh, taboo topics uh, you're talking about, sub मेरे को उसी से मिलता है. As in when mm. I was younger, I remember. uh 15 16 year when i was 15 16 she was the person you know who taught me about all this uh with respect to how to behave with girls uh, you know all uh, uh, everything and anything which a normal boy 15 year old indian boy wouldn't be taught in general was taught yeah. to me by my sister in a lot of ways right so there's the difference that i get and i'm i'm sure a lot of your audience looks at you like that and they'll probably 5 mm. years down the line tell you know there was this creator avanti uh because of her i got to know all of this and now i'm like this so yeah, uh, yeah that that is creating a lot of impact good to see you on that that's the most thank you no it's it's so funny because it just feel like that right and at this point yeah. 70% of my audience calls me dear didi which i love because i love that part of my identity so it's it's great but um truly i mean i love it when people love the music i love it when people you know love a specific piece of content but when somebody writes to me or shares that something has changed their mindset or the way they think about something or the way they've interacted with the world that to me is the biggest just that's when you know that it's it's worth it mm, yeah totally totally agreed speaking about mental health uh, mm. you know i work with a lot of creators you you hang around with a lot of creators you are a creator uh, i i've seen and saw sure somewhere you've also felt this is that algorithm you can't control the algorithm right it's an uncontrollable oh thing and uh, the algorithm will definitely give you low reach at certain point of time it will keep yes. doing that game with you yeah kabhi upar kabhi niche and this impacts a lot of creators because you know it, it's literally playing with their a lot of creators ident- their identity is their following right yeah. ki hamare itne followers hain we get this many views and then the next month they have half of them and their depression and all that stuff goes on of course what would be how has your personal experience with this been and secondly what would be your advice uh, because i feel that we have gone past that phase uh, so what would you advise all the other creators decent creators 100k 200k creators who are of seeing course. this upward downward trend no it's uh, it does play with you mentally i'm not going to lie and there have been times but you have to really i think for me just i need to have certain principles that ground me hmm. and so for example um even my passion is music i feel like my purpose is driven by the the social impact right and so that keeps me grounded for what why i do what i do similarly for for this i even though it's hard to think of it that way i always mm-hmm. have to think impact is greater than numbers you know and really holding on to that knowing that yeah. yes sure not as many people have seen this one thing but are you playing a long term game or are you playing a short term game right and if you're in it for the long term your growth is never going to be the upward trajectory it's going to be ups and downs and crests and troughs and so you have true. to recognize that also the people who are consuming you are actually people they're not robots mm. and some days <laughs> they're not going to be on the internet and watch things or some things they just may not like i think i've been hyper aware of that from early stages of my growth because I've been doing diversity of content, right? I think what happens with a lot of creators that I've seen and some of my friends, some people we even know, mm-hmm. um if they'll do a certain type style and that works so they run with it, right? And that's I think that's a brilliant strategy. But what ends up happening sometimes is if you add something new and people don't are do that, you may not get as much, right? And so that can be like, "Oh my god, but that yeah. was me and not I have to then then do you have to morph who you are to your content and your personality so it becomes this very you know because there's a fine line yeah the person and the persona and the brand and the human yeah. so i think for me because i was very clear that when i started growing i wanted to make sure people knew that when they came to this space they are going to get music as a dominant but they are also going to get education they're also going to get you know conversations they're going to get lifestyle ish stuff they're going to get all of this and um it's all going to be in one place 
So I, I, I'm aware, right? So, so some people who care about college stuff may not care about a video with my boyfriend, right? But that's okay, and vice versa. Um, <laughs> whoever comes yeah. for whatever they come for, I realized that a lot of younger consumers are personality-based consumers. So if they like aspects of it and they so buy true. into that, you know, they can. It doesn't matter. And and for me, my hope is that they're there for the music. But if they're there for something else, that's amazing. And and so long as you stay, that's okay. It mm-hmm. it plays with you a lot. But I think you need to a have people in your life that are support systems and keep you grounded. Right? Because the more you grow numerically, like you said, it can become a part of your identity and you can probably become complacent, being like, oh, I am so cool, I am, blah, 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 <laughs> right? Um, but you need to have people in your life who tell you, no, you're actually kind of shitty sometimes. You're annoying, you're you know, this, you're that. And um, I mean, in, in the best way possible, you shouldn't have people who are constantly telling you that, but right, people who keep you grounded. And for me, I feel like that's definitely my brother, my family in general, my partner, some of my friends. Mm-hmm. Um, and and it's important to have that and also i think just because the algorithm changes so much if you are in this space it's important to be platform agnostic is what i've realized right so try and be in as many spaces as you can it's it's impossible to be equally active on all but mm. choose you that are important to you and build them all out together like i see a lot of people who are popping off on reels right and they're like that's all i'm going to do um eventually i might do something else but i encourage a lot of people especially once they start growing build others you start going on reels build youtube you start going on youtube make sure you have a presence on at least an instagram if not elsewhere because mm. you never know what the algorithm is like and how it's going to support you or not and yeah. if it is being right and things are going to change factors are going to change so you stay true to who you are and in that sense i feel privileged being an artist as well because being a musician in itself is a full-time job right <laughs> um, it just so happens that I also do content and that also benefits my music, right? I'm yeah. not going to say it doesn't, but those are sometimes two separate things, right? Yeah, and so yeah of course. I can, I, can, I can turn to the writing, the creation, the the performance, the, all of that sometimes when, when this feels like it's a lot. So, you know, for other creators, my piece of advice would be don't fully have your identity just in that. Figure out other ways you can build things and make a new yeah. extension, right? You can build something physical, whether that's you want to create Mm. products or you want to you know explore other things but having something else also that fulfills your creative passions but is not just solely reliant on the number really will help mm. yeah i think a lot of creators tell me this only you know reaches down and all this and yeah most of the time i only come up with this answer that question you asked that are you here for the short term or the long term if you're playing the long term game which you should then you shouldn't be worried about you know ki aaj reach nahi aa rahi hai ki aa rahi hai exactly right and uh, so i think the problem is ki because of instagram reels and all this a lot of creators who popped up recently right they hit overnight 50k overnight 60k and then they yeah. keep growing and then they see a saturation point for some while for like a month or two and they're not growing that just you know messes It's up their dopamine yeah, yeah. yeah. because they see so much of growth not just in terms of number what does the number do they bring you a lot of money they bring you brand deals they bring you attention of people you were just following yesterday and you know trying to get in their dms and now they are giving you attention and now yeah. suddenly it's it's going down again so that just destabilizes you but i think that being aware at a point and playing the long term game is very important gave me a few ideas also i'm going <laughs> to tell this to my creators <laughs> amazing no that's i'm i'm glad and you know to to that point i see a lot of people in this industry music entertainment creation whatever mm. ge- keeping a lot of information mm. um but, but not the, sharing it not sharing it yeah. and i think that's the most useless thing in the world because <laughs> truly because it's it's so stupid right if there's if i am a female creator and artist who does blah 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 xyz that doesn't mean there can't be 20 others like me and firstly we're never going to be like each other because all of us bring our own unique perspective but the more of us there are in a space the bigger the whole pie goes the bigger the yeah. opportunities grow and the more we're like no they made it in this thing there can only be one xyz person the the more the smaller it's going to feel and then the you know you for example you work with brands right so brands are probably like who are the few people i can slot this into but to, correct me if i'm wrong if they want to do a campaign in in a certain space and you give them 20 people who have similar audiences to what they're targeting they'll love you even more 
Mm-hmm. For sure. You yeah. Know? Yeah. yeah. Um, Agreed. And and so it's just honestly and and the more one of the biggest things like a lot of people are like okay how do you grow blah 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 and i can give you 20000 tips but one of them which a lot of people don't necessarily realize or they see in a superficial way is collaboration matters right because not only is it a strategic cross pollination of 100% but a also like a, you get to make new friends from different backgrounds that you never would have in life um some of the friends yeah. i made as creators like we would never have met otherwise and i find that insane I and some of them are now such close friends of mine you know mm, yeah um, and it's also just you're you're building more opportunities with and for each other and that's cool that's super cool true 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 i mean this this part this is why I, i do this podcast you know connect with creators like you and people like you uh, and this podcast has been the biggest investment uh, of of my last 5 years because i've not earned one penny out of this particular podcast nor <sighs> have paid it but you know the value from the network or yes. you know collaborating as i just mentioned that that just crazy it just adds up and compounds totally mm. right so so what's what's next for you Uh, do you want to be a singer? Do you want to be an actor? What is next for Avanti Nadral? <laughs> Why do I have to choose, Ayush? Um, I mean, both, of course. You can't. Both. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, this is um, where we all always want to put a label, right? What do you want to be? I mean, I am a singer, right? I am a creator. I am this. Um, what's next for me is working on a bunch of different projects that are still always at this intersection, right? So we have a ton of new music coming out soon. Um, wow. or at least at least being worked on and you know as as you mentioned jealous was the last release but yeah. the, EP, the EP called double standards i released a couple months ago we have two more of those visuals coming out soon but there's a lot of music there's a lot of projects i'm working on working on a sex education series with a couple um organizations and brands too which i'm really excited about Damn. Uh, lots of there's just a lot in the pipeline and um i just hope to continue scaling and having these conversations you know creating songs and stories and and having that impact and whatever form in which that takes if that mm. leads me to be a part of you know film or tv at some point in my life that would be awesome if that leads me yeah. to going on tour which i am so excited to do again i crazy i'm i was you know like I mean, you mentioned i'm here right now in la but I was in Canada a few days ago and I performed at a festival and it was my first time back on stage in a year and a half and it felt amazing and I'm really hopeful when things come down to be able to go Yay, back on, awesome. on the road and do a tour in in India um because it's been it's been a long time since I performed in in mm-hmm. person so I'm sorry this is a very vague answer but the long and the short of it is <laughs> no no it's not no no because because there is there makes me realize the question was vague <laughs> the, the question was vague but also there's a lot happening but also I don't know what it's going to look like in 6 months. All mm-hmm. I know is what my purpose is going to look like, right? And and we'll mm-hmm. see what manifestation that takes. We have a lot of plans. We also are launching a few different things. Uh in addition I have a production company and we are working on a couple things as well and we're actually um opening up a studio space very soon. It's a multi-purpose creative space. So in India or US? Do, in India, in India. So you can do music mixing mastering nice. anything audio related podcasting etc you can also do videography photography dance anything you want in that space mm-hmm. um and it's Damn. a cool yeah i'm i'm excited we've all it's not fully done yet but we've you know i've just told a few friends meaning love the ambition that. yeah thank you and i just honestly i realized because being a creator for this past year has, has showed me that there's so much talent but for a lot of people they don't have the access they don't have access to a space mm. they don't have access to a network they don't have access to you know and, and my access to the creator network has come from me just literally making friends but not as many, not everybody is as extroverted mm. right and so for yeah. them, having a space uh or having you know places and and opportunities that they can really foster that cross collaboration i think is mm. important yeah i mean i've i've seen this that even your team is pretty uh, smart from a sense of like you know you have built different type of things as you mentioned you have your company and then the merchandise coming in and then a lot of yes. music and stuff and then brinel she reached out to me one day randomly 6 months ago i think for brand work and i was like damn this is that just tells you because i'm not out there in the public yet but she still mailed me yeah. so that just gave me a you know idea 
how active you guys are uh, in, you know <laughs> looking for opportunities and all that 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 really uh, gave me a sense of the quality of the team that you're also building so kafi sahi kafi sahi right uh, and and the last question this is the last question uh, that i ask everybody it's three books that you'd recommend and then the three life lessons that you'd want to share with the 18 to 24 well audience hmm. there's a book called the seven habits of highly effective people i read the teen version as a kid and i would highly recommend that i think mm. it it shaped a lot of what how i think about the world um there is a book called well it's also a film but you all might have heard of the secret and i read it yeah manifestation just yeah the, the idea yeah, whether you call it manifestation whatever you call it i just think this idea of putting things out into the universe that you would like to come back to you in some way is just important and you know really grounding. Mm. And I think the third that I would recommend is um there are so many but probably you know I I read a lot of like autobiographical stuff growing up or autobiographical fiction and like yeah, books and books. Mm. I think anybody you find inspiring if you can find some sort of autobiography of their life um or some access to that i know that's very vague but truly i think just understanding what goes on behind the scenes of somebody with the process mm. yeah is important because not only will it help you get perspective but it also humanizes them and i think that's important mm. got it three life lessons um you're never too young to do anything so don't let anybody tell you that and let that stand in the way of what you want to do the world is at your fingertips the second is um basically a paraphrased quote by my angelo which is people will forget what you did and they'll forget what you said but they'll never forget how you made them feel and so to me yeah. that's always a core tenet that that i hold and a third is clearly also inspired by a quote um but it's from a movie the incredibles edna the character Uh-huh. She says, "Luck favors the prepared," and I I love that. What what that means to me is that in life there's so many things out of your control, right? External factors, luck, it's not whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, and especially in our industry, even more, right? Because there's so many factors that go into it. Mm. You can't control any of that. You can't control the algorithm. You can't control like you can't control any of these things. But what you can control is the hard work you put in and the intention with which you do it. And so if you do the work. if you build the infrastructure if you do that then if you know what is your way you will be prepared yeah correct correct thanks for that avanti thank you for coming on the podcast uh, i've linked down her handles instagram and youtube go check her out uh, go follow and avanti i am truly inspired uh, by the work <laughs> that you do i'm not kidding uh, i i i wish the creator side of me you know impacts or engages with my audience the way you do uh, i one of the few creators that i look up to while engaging or you know communicating with my audience that's you so uh, that's very kind thank you thank you again for doing the podcast of course thank you so much for having me and thank you for the work that you do and if um i wish his mom is listening the work that he does is incredibly important <laughs> it's going to change the world one day so thank you yes.